Hello and good evening, Chicago. Welcome back to another episode of Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. The NFL draft is done. Ryan Poles has brought in his first NFL draft class. And it was, dare I say it, polarizing. We will, I'm sorry, I had to do it. We will break down all 11 of the newest Bears, plus how do the Bears stack up next to the rest of the division after this class? Have they moved up, down? Did they stay where they were? Lots to break down and discuss there with the Bears tonight. Of course, it's not just going to be the Bears tonight that we'll be talking about. The Bulls had their season end last week, predictably, yet still unfortunately, at the hands of the Milwaukee Bucks, so they are now in full off-season mode. What's next for Coach Donovan? What's next for AK and Mark Eversley? The Acme Corporation, what are they what are they gonna be doing next in this offseason? We'll be discussing some bulls out on the west side. And then We've got the Sox and the Cubs coming up in the Crosstown series later on this week. We'll break down some baseball talk. All that and more coming up on Chi Town Weekly. Buckle it on up. Let's have some fun. And once again, welcome on in to Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Very excited to be with you guys here tonight, talking all things Chicago sports. And of course, the big thing is the NFL draft. Ryan Poles completing his first NFL draft class. Lots to go over there. I want to dive into it, but I want to ask you guys, the listeners, first. I see Taryn and Arthur are in the chat room. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you both for being here. And if you are listening live tonight on Spreaker.com, go on in, log in, make yourself a username and password. It's free. There's no no charge or anything like that. Hop on in. You can join on in with the chat room and interact with us a little bit. I want to do a little bit of interaction with everybody tonight. Starting off, first of all, you know, we're we're gonna do the ad reads. We're gonna do the uh, the the homework, if you will. Get that get that done and out of the way. But first, I want to ask you guys. There's two ways that I can start off with this Bears draft class. First of all, um, there's a a broader, more macro look after this first class. Kind of a a, a, a philosophy of what I think Ryan Poles showed us with this class, kind of how he's thinking of how he wants to build the team. So we can do a philosophical analyzation first, or we can dive in and talk about the, the 11 new bears the each of the picks and the players themselves kind of individually and analyze those picks. But I want to hear from you guys. Do, do you want me to start with the individual picks and the individual players, or do you want me to start with kind of the, the draft philosophy of Ryan Poles? So I will throw that question out to you guys and then to give you guys a, a chance to contribute and tell me what you think, we will re- do our sponsor reads here, first of all, starting, of course, with the Southern California Warriors semi-professional football team. The world of semi-pro sports is unlike any other sports organizations. Players pay to play in hopes of so many different outcomes, whether it's playing to get film to try out for professional teams, big-time colleges, or just playing to stay in shape. No matter what, all semi-pro players have one thing in common, and that's playing for the love of the game. 
The SoCal Warriors have been on a quest to earn titles and give players second chances since 2017. Whether you're in Southern California or anywhere in the world, give semi-pro sports a chance if you love your sport. You may get that second chance you've been waiting for as an athlete. Check them out on Twitter at SoCal Warriors or find them on Instagram at Southern California underscore Warriors or by going to Facebook, Southern California Warriors. IE Sports Radio, we are available on all the major social platforms. It's the same handle finds us everywhere, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at IE Sports Radio. And we are excited because IE Sports Radio turns eight years old this month. To celebrate, we're hosting a special three-hour edition of The Defining Moment on May 14th. The show starts at 12 Eastern, that's 11 o'clock, Saturday, May 14th, 11 o'clock Saturday morning. Come hang out with your favorite IESR personalities. Larry will be hosting that. I will see what I'll be able to do to contribute to that show as well. As always, thank you for helping to make this possible. And if you do want to do some more to help as well, of course, you can go to our website, iesportsradio.com. There you'll find the link to our Patreon page. And there you, you'll you find all the different tiers that we have. The lowest starts at just $5 a month. That gets you a shout out on all of our shows. Bay Area Raised and Mlos Great on Twitter. Thank you for continuing to sponsor us on Twitter. Higher tiers, not only do you get shout outs, you get access to our podcasting university. You get access to unique segments of our show the defining moment you get your own segment on there at a high enough tier you also get access to some of our merchandise so different ways that you can interact with us and as always thank you for continuing to make ie sports radio direct feed for all that is sports and allowing us to make it to now eight nearly eight years of covering sports one last a uh, couple little bits of housekeeping here we do have a new fan of the month, Justin Ekstrom. He is a Vikings fan from Minnesota. You can find him at the Sports Crib 21 on Twitter. He's on there, so congratulations to our fan of the month there, Justin. And another congratulations, Mike Pat, the host of Let's Wine About Sports. He hosted the 2022 NFL Mock Draft Challenge. He won the 2022 NFL Mock Draft Challenge. He was a little bit embarrassed about that when he he told me. I was checking in with him to make sure that everybody got the proper shout out, and then he told me, "Yeah, I I won it. Uh, I don't know how you want to take it from here." I was well, great, you know, <laughs> good good for you. He 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 did not want to do a humble brag or or throw a whole lot of stats out there. He just wanted me to say he got five of the top ten picks. And then some later on, some picks in the in the late first round helped him seal the deal. So congratulations to Mike. Mike will uh, Mike will get his choice of either a hat or shirt from Larry B. And Arthur, yeah, my my all kicker draft unfortunately did not win. Though my all kicker draft, there were a lot of kickers that went in the draft this year. That as high as what the fourth round, there were some kickers coming off the board. So my all kicker draft wasn't quite as 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 silly as I thought it was going to be. There were some kickers coming off the board early and often. All right, so. Taking a, a quick, very, very impromptu poll of the listening audience uh, that, that uh, chimed into the chat room here. Again, the question was, should I start with draft philosophy and then dive into the picks or start with the picks and then dive into the philosophy? And I see two votes for, philo- for philosophy and one vote for individual players. So I guess that means philosophy wins. Sorry, Mom. We'll, uh, we'll get to yours here in a minute. So, looking at the Bears class as a whole, wound up with 11 picks, which is terrific. And they started off the day, started off the draft with just six selections. And Ryan Poles was able to do some wheeling and dealing and turn that into 11. On its face, he he, he turned it up to 11. Sorry, I had to go there. On its face value, I like that. When in doubt, it's you always wanted to trade back in the draft because that's where the value is. The, the draft 
is such a a spin of the roulette wheel. It is such a crapshoot. You never, you can never be certain about what you're getting in the draft. The only certainty, uh, terrible cliche. The only certainty is uncertainty with the NFL draft. So you want to collect as the best teams make it their mission to collect as many picks as possible so that they can kind of mitigate some of the risk of each individual pick. So I love that that polls turned six picks into 11 picks. And it was so refreshing, too, after seven years of having a general manager in Ryan Pace who would fall in love with an individual prospect and then build his entire draft around getting that guy, whatever the consequences might be, he would get that guy, whether it be Anthony Miller, David Montgomery, Justin Fields, Roquan Smith, etc. at all. It was very refreshing to see Ryan Poles did not trade up a single time in this class. The Bears still have their entire draft for next year in tech. Oh, a couple of things that I forgot from the housekeeping. This show is available to you on Twitter, at IESRC on Twitter. I am also at Twitter, at Adam underscore Karnick. Please feel free to, to follow along there if you feel so inclined. Again, if you're listening live tonight, hop on into the chat room. Larry's there. Arthur is there. Andrew is there. Taryn is there. Good evening and welcome to all. My mother snuck into the chat room just for a second. Hello and good evening to everyone. I appreciate that you're here listening. At the same time, if you're listening as a podcast or you're listening later on uh, or you're listening live but just want to sit back, I am here for you. Whatever whatever way uh, I can best I can best be here for you, that's what I want to be. Thank you just so much for being here and listening. I really appreciate it. So in general, I, I like, I love that polls nearly doubled the amount of picks that we had overall as a team that, that the Bears had and that he didn't have to sacrifice into the future. He did technically trade away one pick from the 2023 draft. It was the, the bonus sixth round pick that he got from the Chargers in the Khalil Mack deal and turned that... Uh, sent that back to the Chargers in exchange for two seventh round picks this year. So the Khalil Mack deal wound up being Khalil Mack for a second and two sevenths from the Chargers. And I, I like this from Taryn too. He chimes in, I'm glad the Chargers can help us. I like that Poles seems to have a little bit of a relationship with the Chargers general manager. I like that he's got, he seems to be starting a network there. It's it's a it's nice that he's kind of got that to start off to start off his his professional career there that he started to develop that relationship and work that relationship. At the end, a, a sixth next year versus two sevenths this year probably not a huge difference, but this was considered to be a very deep draft class because of the pandemic, because of the weird COVID season in twenty twenty there were some extra eligibility for some guys. So it was nice to see polls tap into that a little bit and get some extra guys this year. That being said, eight of the 11 picks were in the final day of the draft. You're talking rounds five through seven, the the bottom of the draft, not necessarily key contributors right out of the gate. You know, not necessarily guys that you're going to look to right away week one here in 2022 to be major, massive, important pieces to this team going forward. All that praise that I just heaped, unfortunately, comes with a caveat. I'm going to talk about the individual players that they picked here in just a second. But to start off with, the... The fact that both second rounders, the Bears' top two choices, both are defense, 
I was more than a little frustrated with that. And here's why it, it, I don't disagree that the bears secondary needed work. And I'll talk about that when I talk, when I break down the picks individually here in just a little bit. So I, I, I understand where he was coming from and I appreciate that. Yeah. Marcus Colston came in the sixth round for the saints. Uh, the bears, uh, had a starting left tackle who was a very solid player that contributed for for many seasons that came from the seventh round. It's not that you can't find guys deep. Uh, I, I don't want to come across that way. Um, where I, and Kale brings it up perfectly, it doesn't feel like the Bears did much to help Justin Fields. And this is where the philosophy kind of comes into play a little bit. In the modern day NFL, it is about scoring. It is about getting points. It is about acquiring a quarterback and then making sure that your quarterback has the tools he needs around him to get the job done. That's not to say that defense is irrelevant or unimportant or should be ignored. Defense is still very necessary, very important. Look at the Rams. You can't tell me that if if the Rams don't have Aaron Donald or Jalen Ramsey, that they're still going to win the Super Bowl. I don't believe it. But you also... By the same token, if you were to take away Cooper Cup, or if you were to take away Matthew Stafford, if you were to take away the offense that could score from anywhere on the field at just about any time, that they would have made it either. You need to be able to score. You need to be able to identify a quarterback and then give that quarterback the tools and the protection that he needs. And it, it feels to me, we're seeing a little bit of a pattern here, that the, the one free agent that Poles went after with anything more than a tryout Prove, prove your worth to me kind of a deal was a defensive tackle, a three-technique defensive tackle. And then the top two draft picks he made, Kyler Gordon and then the safety from Penn State Brisker, There were, now there was a run on wide receivers in the first round. I'm not going to deny that. But there was still talent there at the wide receiver position that he chose to bypass in place of drafting the best players available on his board. Because let's face it, everything was a need for the Bears. Absolutely everything was a need. Certainly secondary this is it's just it's what it's starting to feel like a little bit to me I'm starting to get these these nagging feelings we go back a decade plus to the Jay Cutler trade Jerry Angelo makes the deal to acquire Jay Cutler and immediately the feeling was well we've got the quarterback he will elevate the ta- the rest of the talent on the offense simply with his presence with his playability and that's what that's all we'll need to be able to get the job done offensively we have the quarterback therefore the rest of the offense will take care of itself I'm not saying that that is what polls is doing or thinking I'm just unfortunately I'm getting that 
feeling. This is it's starting to feel eerily familiar. I know it's early. I'm not saying panic. I'm not saying get rid of polls. I'm not saying this whole thing was a disaster and this is all, we're all going to die. I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it's starting to feel, I've, I've, I've seen this movie before and this is one of the ways it starts. This is one of the ways this movie can start. It's not the only way that this movie can go. There's lot, <laughs> we're at the we're in the first 10 minutes of the Ryan Poles Bears movie. It's it's going to be a two and a half or a three hour long epic. It, <laughs> there's plenty of room for plot changes to still happen. It's just the very beginning has me a little worried. And I, I, I don't think Justin Fields is going anywhere. And, and Arthur brings that up. Fields isn't going anywhere. I don't think he is either. It's just I worry that the the think the there may be a feeling settling in that it's more important to build the defense because the quarterback's just good enough he'll elevate the other players around him. That's my fear on the philosophy. All right. Now, let's dive a little bit into the picks themselves. Starting with Kyler Gordon, cornerback from Washington. I like this young man. I like the pick. General rule of thumb when you go into a draft, and assuming you've got picks, you know, that you're not waiting until the third, fourth, or fifth round to make your picks. General rule is you want to come away with you want to come away with at least two starters out of your class. The very first guy you pick and then somebody. Kyler Gordon should step right in and be a starter for the Bears day one. I apologize that it's ta- it's taking me a second to get going here. I, I went to pull up the list, and it was last year's list of the Bears picks. Not very helpful. Kyler Gordon should fit in right away, plug him in, mark him as a starter right away, day one, opposite Jalen Johnson. Put him on the outside. Let's go. You've got an, an excellent corner there to to start things off. Six feet, buck 94. He's got long arms. He can play inside and outside. Excellent first pick for the Bears. Second pick, Jaquan Brisker, safety out of Penn State. Again, he should be able to plug in right away. I, I could see that maybe... DeAndre Houston Carson, maybe simply because he's a he's a returning veteran, maybe he starts week one, but Brisker should have the skill to take over at at the other at the strong safety opposite Eddie Jackson very soon. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Brisker and Gordon starting day one in the secondary. Big holes. The Bears needed to fill their secondary. And I, I, I will, I'll back up now for a second and, and give Paul some more praise. All right, he chose to go best player available. He chose to emphasize to, to not shy away from defense simply because it was defense right out of the gate. He's building, it looks like he's wanting to build the defense in a modern way. 538 came out with an article, it was several years ago now, where they talked about that in the modern NFL, in the modern day, with so much emphasis on passing from the other teams, that if you want to build a defense, the the old way of thinking of start with the you know, build a defense front to back, start with your pass rush and then work your way backwards, it doesn't work like that anymore because offenses are so fast to get rid of the ball in the passing game and effectively use 
wide receiver screens or tight end screens or bubbles or, or quick hitches as an extension of the running game, that negates a pass rush. You can have an excellent pass rush. The Bears were fourth in the NFL last year in sacks, yet they still struggled horribly at defending the pass. Brad Biggs had a couple of stats shortly after the Bears made their couple of selections. They were in the, the bottom 10 or 12 teams in the league in passing yards allowed last year, and they were dead last in the NFL in opposing quarterback rating. Quarterbacks routinely had their best games throwing against the Bears, despite the fact that the Bears were a top five defense in sacks last season. Sacks, a defensive pass rush is not the way you want to build your defense anymore. You need to build it from the back and move it forward. You need your secondary to be able to cover That then in turn, instead of your pass rush helping your secondary, your secondary helps your pass rush by taking away the quick hitches and the short routes, forcing the quarterback to hold on to the ball for an extra second or two, and then allowing the pass rush to get home. So I love that polls, whether intentionally or not, right now I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say, yes, this was deliberate and intentional. He wants to build the defense from the back forward. I love that. It's modern, it's, it's recognizing the way the game is played now and not simply pining for the glory days when you could decapitate a guy and it would be a holding penalty on the offense for daring to get in Mike Singletary's way. You're, you're not stuck in the past like that. I, I applaud polls for that. Another interesting tidbit on both Gordon and Brisker Their last two seasons, neither one of them was flagged for a penalty. That's cool. And that's not, certainly that's not going to hold up. I'm not going to hold them to that standard in the pros that, oh man, you better not get a flag. But the first time either of them, either of them gets flagged, it'll be from, it'll be from when they were undergrads. Heck for Brisker, it'll be from when he was playing in junior college was the last time he got flat, he got assigned a penalty. He got assessed a penalty. That's pretty cool. That's very cool. Moving on next, you've got Vellis Jones Jr., a wide receiver from Tennessee. Here's, here's a guy, Chris Collinsworth for you. He took advantage of the rules afforded to him by the, the strange COVID season in 2020 in college. He began his collegiate career in 2016. He played six seasons of major college ball, both at Southern California and at Tennessee. He's a guy that reportedly Justin Fields likes. That's, that's good. That's, that's good. You are listening to your quarterback a little bit, Ryan Poles. When you start getting into the third round and later, this is where you start getting into the guys with flaws where they've got something, but they've got other things that you need to work with them. For Jones, he doesn't run a whole heck of a lot of routes. He's got to work on his hands. He's got things that need to be coached. But one thing that he has that can't be coached, speed. He is fast. A 4.3140 yard dash. You can't make a guy be faster. You, You can teach him how to catch the ball. You can teach him how to run routes better, more crisp, more crisply, more deliberately. You can't teach him how to be faster. He's got, that's the same compliment I gave when the Bears drafted Darnell Mooney. I'm not saying that Jones is, is bound to be a wide receiver one or going to start right away, but I like, I like the pick. Braxton Jones, tackle out of Southern Utah. That was in the fifth round. We'll see what they get out of him. The The next guy that I got kind of excited about, fifth round, Dominique Robinson, an edge rusher from Miami of Ohio. This is this is, might be the weirdest profile I have ever seen on a player. I, You guys in the chat, tell me if you have heard of this before. I had not. He began his career as a wide receiver, then switched not just positions, switched sides of the ball and became an edge rusher at Miami of Ohio. I've never heard of that. I've heard of players changing positions. I have heard of guys 
going from being a quarterback at the collegiate level to a wide receiver or a running back at the at the professional level. I have seen guys who, oh, he was a tackle, uh, and then we shifted him in, inside to guard, or he played defensive end, but we're going to use him at defensive tackle. Taron, who, okay, Taron tells me he's seen that before. Who was the, tell me a little bit about the guy that you, that you've seen that before. I want to know. I've, I would love to know more of that. To me, that that is such an anomaly. That is so unique and different and strange. I'm I'm fascinated by it. Now he is a project to be sure. Um, he doesn't he doesn't necessarily set the edge very well against the run. He's not necessarily somebody that you're going to that you're going to put out there on first or second down and and try to tell him to hold his own against running backs or tackles who are looking to run block but oh, I'm sorry I just I got distracted by the chat room there I was I was reading backwards there so sorry I had to catch back up there oh, yeah. Deion Sanders Deion Sanders okay Wide receiver to corner, sure. I, I've heard of that, Taryn. I've heard of that. I have never heard of a guy going from wide receiver to edge rusher. That, the skill sets are so different. The body types. I mean, you think about a wide receiver to a corner. All right, the old joke is always, what's the difference between a wide receiver and a corner? Well, a wide receiver can catch. <laughs> you know, uh, 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 the reason that a cornerback plays on the defense is he can run the routes he can read the quarterback's eyes he can track the ball he just has hands of stone so they put him on the defense where you know just knocking it down is good enough um i have never heard of a guy going from wide receiver to defensive end slash edge rusher he was more of an outside linebacker than a than a hand in the dirt defensive end at miami of ohio i am fascinated by him i will love watching him. He's raw as heck. He needs a lot of work. He he needs to be molded. He needs to be to be worked with. But there will certainly be packages. There will be times and opportunities for him this season on on thir- especially early in the season, third down, obvious passing situations. Get him in there. Let's see what he can do. Let Go get the pin your ears back and go to the quarterback. Let's see what you can do, kid. I'm fascinated to watch Dominique Robinson. Um, some other moves: Zachary Thomas, tackle out of San Diego State in the sixth round. Uh, somebody that could potentially be a swing tackle, play left or right. Tristan Ebner, running back out of Baylor. He's going to be a kick returner. He and he and Velas Jones Jr. both were competent kick returners in college. Trust in Ebner, he might be this front office's version of Tariq Cohen. We'll see what they have there. I would expect far more out of him as a kick returner slash punt returner than as a, a true running back, especially early on in the season. Then Doug Kramer out of Illinois, one with a, a local kid there out of out of Southern Downstate, down at uh, University of Illinois in Champaign, Doug Kramer. We'll see what he can do. Same with Jai Tyree Carter. Tackle out of Southern. Safety Elijah Hicks. I know that's one that Coach Eberflus was very excited about out of California. Just a motor kid. And then finally, one pick before Mr. Irrelevant, punter Trenton Gill out of North Carolina State. I have no problems with taking a punter in the seventh round. They needed one. They got one. Excellent. So... Zeroing in individually, and I look at the clock. Yeah, I'm a I'm a little late for a break. We are going to go just a little long tonight. Taryn did set point earlier this afternoon, so I've got a little bit of room. There's nobody immediately after me tonight here on the network, so we'll go a little long tonight, a little past the hour mark that we usually do. I promise I won't keep you on too long or too late. I know there's NBA playoffs and NHL hockey playoffs have started. Mm, eyebrows up for me. Um, so I won't keep you. I won't keep everybody on too late, but we will go a little long tonight. Um, so at a micro level, looking at the picks, there are a lot of picks that I like. There are a lot of picks that I'm intrigued by for the Bears. 
uh, mission accomplished that you got two starters. Your first two picks, those guys should start right away for the Bears. It'll be interesting to see of the of the four offensive linemen that they took, what what becomes of them? Uh, do any of them factor into the rotation early this season? Do any of them factor in the rotation at all? Uh, will some of these guys just wind up being candidates on the practice squad? We'll find out. That's that's kind of the fun of this. I am super intrigued to watch Dominique Robinson. I just he fascinates me. I I heard an interview with a, a, a draft guru this morning that the Bears may have that not only is he an intriguing prospect in the fifth round, the Bears may have actually gotten value for him. That he talent wise, athletic ability wise, may have been good enough to go in the fourth round and the Bears got him in the fifth. I it, I'm geeking over him as you can as you can tell. I'm very excited to see what Dominic Robinson can do. Pulling out on a macro level, though, to look at this, I do hope that going forward, there is a greater emphasis placed on supporting Justin Fields because that's what this season is going to be all about for the Bears. They they shouldn't realistically be vying for a playoff spot I mean, the NFC as a whole is still very weak. Who knows? They might be they might be just not bad enough to kind of sneak into that seven spot. I'd be surprised, but there are a lot of bad teams in the conference seemingly right now. You never know how things play out. We'll see once the schedule gets released here in a week and a half or whatever. I don't know why they wait so dang long. Just release the just release the stupid thing. You know what it is. Just do it. It doesn't need to be a two-hour special on ESPN. Just release the stupid thing. Anyway, I don't want to get on that tangent. That's a dumb soapbox to get on. This season needs to be about learning what you have in Justin Fields. I fear that it's going to be difficult to do that because the weapons around him are going to be so subpar that it's going to be difficult. But we'll see. We will see what they we will see what they've got. We will see what they can do. All right. We are going to take a break. We're a little long. We are going to we are going to take a break. When we come back, I want to peek around quickly at the rest of the division, see how see how they did, how they stacked up, and then the Bulls season predictably but unfortunately ended last week. I do want to take a little bit of time. We'll go more in depth a little later. Uh, in future episodes, but for right now, I do just want to kind of put a, a small bow on the Bulls season that came to a close last week. This is Chi Town Weekly on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I am Adam Kernick. We will be right back after this. shores of the Puget Sound, to the rushing waters of the Columbia River, stretching across the Great Cascades, and on IE Sports Radio lives the Northwest Territory Sports Show, hosted by me, Brad Buckingham. On this show, I cover all the great collegiate and professional sports teams that we have here in the Pacific Northwest. Of course, I'm talking about the Seattle Seahawks, Seattle Mariners, Sounders, and even the Seattle Kraken. But I can't forget all of that is good in Oregon either. I got the Trailblazers, the Oregon Ducks, the Beavers, even the Timbers, and much, much more. You can listen to the show every Sunday from 3 to 4 p.m. Eastern, noon to 1 p.m. Pacific, on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports.
Motorsports takes many form, and there's one show on iSports Radio that's ready to cover it all. I sure hope you're talking about you and I, Daryl, because I know the Extra Mile is the best place to go for everything motorsports related. Yes, it is. From NASCAR to IndyCar to sports cars to everything in between, iSports Radio has everything covered for the fastest sport in the world. Plus, don't forget all of our random shenanigans along the way. That's right, Caitlin. So for plenty of motorsports coverage and plenty of Caitlinisms, check out The Extra Mile on iSports Radio with Daryl Kinsey Jr. and Caitlin Seen, Thursdays at 8 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me and hear me good. If you like sports, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like comedy, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like a different opinion coming from a different angle, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. So join me Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with your host, Jelani J.B. Bodie. And of course, my man Lopan on the Wait a Minute Show. Sports fans, do you like wine? Well, we've got the show for you. This is Let's Wine About Sports, a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously. From the classic Cabernet Sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before. Oh, yeah, we cover it all. And we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well. Football, hockey, collegiate, women's sports, it doesn't matter. We're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all. So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. It's your boy, Marcus Los Great. Here to give you what you want. Here to give you what you need. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming to you live. Straight from your mama's basement with a crispy white tea. <laughs> They are coming to you live every Tuesday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Powered by IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Back for segment number two here of Chi Town Weekly on IE Sports Radio. I am your host, Adam Karnick. Thank you again so much to everybody for being here tonight. Talked a ton about the Bears draft there in the first segment. Wanted to take a quick look now at the rest of the division, how they did as a whole 
How does that stack up to the Bears? Real quickly before before we move on to some of the other things going on around the city, we'll start with the Lions. Um, eight picks for the Lions, two in the first round. Big one. First of all, they got Aiden Hutchinson with the number two overall pick. It was, it was funny. I was actually I was literally on the phone with a buddy of mine who's a Lions fan literally five minutes before the show started. He called and said, hey, I can't remember what time your show starts. You answered, so you're obviously not doing the show. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it like 10 minutes. Oh, quick. And then we talked about the draft for 10 minutes. It was it was beautiful and wonderful. So, Sisson, if you're if you're listening, thank you. It was it was wonderful prep real quick there. Aiden Hutchinson getting him in the first round with their second overall pick. I loved that move. I actually, I nearly picked him in my own mock draft. Uh, I just decided at the last second that the, that the Jaguars wouldn't be stupid enough to pass on him. So last time I trust the Jaguars to not be stupid. <laughs> they passed on him. I don't know why Aiden Hutchinson felt to me like he was the guy in this class. He was the, the generational guy. Not that, the other defensive guys that went in the top five, Larry had to be over the moon. Just the first five picks were all defensive picks. I kind of, I, I, I shouldn't lie. I kind of liked it too. <laughs> um, but Aiden Hutchinson at second overall, that's an amazing pick for the line. Yeah, it was, it was my own fault, Mike. It, it was entirely my own fault. I will own that. That yeah, Last year was a no-brainer that they were going to go Trevor Lawrence. They would have had to have been complete fools to be Trevor Lawrence and, and even and they were complete fools and they still drafted Trevor Lawrence. Apparently it didn't carry over two years in a row. So I love the lions getting Aiden Hutchinson at two trading up as much as they did. I was fascinated by the fact that the lions packaged 32, 32 and 34 overall to jump up to 12 and get Jamison Williams. Uh, there's a couple things that I thought about that move specifically. Um, I'm not... I get that Jamison Williams, if he's 100% healthy, he is the cream of this wide receiving class. He's not 100% healthy. He's coming off of a torn ACL and not only that, he tore the ACL in January. This wasn't George Pickens tearing his ACL back in September. He tore Williams tore it in January in the national championship game. Williams might not play this season. <laughs> you know, that's a that's a 10 to 12 month recovery for 90% of athletes, not just people, athletes. You know, for normal people, that's like a two or three year recovery. For world class athletes, it's a 10 to 12 month recovery. There is every possibility that Jamison Williams either doesn't play at all or plays very sparingly, very minimally for the Lions this season. So I was a little leery and weary of that pick specifically. The other thing that I took from that from the Lions, I want to commend. NFL general managers as a whole on this class, a, a, a high five applause. Let's see. I think there is a, I think there's an applause button somewhere in the effects. I don't use the effects a lot in this show. Let's, let's see. Is this what I think it is? Yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. We'll, we'll have the, the cheesy studio um, applause there in the background to all general managers for not losing their minds and drafting quarterbacks with fifth round grades on them in the first round. I want to commend them all for that. First of all, only one quarterback went in the first round, the lions specifically. I mean, I'm thinking back to when the Vikings drafted Christian Ponder in the top 15, when they even admitted, yeah, he's got a third round grade, but we don't, we don't think he'll make it to us by the third round. So we're going to take him now. I don't want to get off on that tangent. I don't I, it, focus, focus, focus. Um, so I, I it was very interested by the Lions having 32 and 34 overall. I felt like had the Lions stayed with those picks, I wouldn't have been shocked at all to see them take a quarterback at 34. 
I wouldn't have done it with 32. I would have rather done it at 34 because you get effectively the same value of player, but you're not quite as committed to him because, well, he's technically a second round pick. So when they traded both 32 and 34, that told me that one of two things about their views of the quarterbacks, that either A, they assumed there was going to be a run on them and they didn't want to, and they didn't think one was going to be there, so they would rather get their value and trade up and, and look at another position, or they just didn't like the quarterbacks at all. So I'm I'm very fascinated and curious by that overall from the Lions. Uh, uh, the rest of it... Um, a very solid draft overall. Pro Football Focus gave them an A+. They loved the draft overall for the Lions. Uh, moving, down, moving down to the Packers, once again, did not take a wide receiver in the first round for Aaron Rodgers. Yes, there was a run on wide receivers. Yes, I know. I know, and Justice is going to say it. And other people, Mike said it the night of the draft, that there was a massive run on wide receivers and the value wasn't there. Quay Walker was a early second round guy. Yeah, I picked him in my mock draft to go to the Packers. It was one of the few picks I actually got right. It still doesn't make it a right pick. It just means that I believe that the general manager was going to make that mistake. And they did. And then Devontae Wyatt, defensive lineman. Again, I know you're trying to get positional value. We'll see. We'll see. But then they killed it the rest of the draft. The second and third days, they absolutely just crushed it. So we'll see what that all we'll see what that all turns into and, and becomes. Christian Watson in the second round. That's a guy that I wouldn't have minded had he fallen to the Bears. The Packers jumped up and made sure he didn't. They got some more protection. They, they, man, they took to the fact that they didn't have a wide receiver. They, they basically just had warm bodies at the wide receiver position, and they fixed it. Christian Watson in the second round. Romeo Dubs out of, Dubs? We're going to go with it. Out of Nevada in the fourth round. Uh, Samori Touré out of Nebraska in the seventh round. They wanted to get some weapons for for Aaron Rodgers. Not in love with their day one picks down the rest of the board, though. It, it feels like they made some good moves. And then the Vikings. Again, lots of picks. They always wind up with a bazillion picks. I'm not sure what to ultimately make of their of their pick. Again, they didn't have a they they traded all the way down from 12 to 32. They took they took Lewis Sign out of Georgia, a safety. They made an emphasis of improving their defense and improving their interior offensive line. We'll see how that pans out for the Vikings. Um you're still trying to make it work with Kirk Cousins at quarterback. I appreciate that they're doing everything they can to try to build the rest of the team to be as much as possible so that Cousins' high floor, but low that his low ceiling doesn't get in the way of the rest of the team. We'll see what happens. Ultimately, though, I feel like today, right now, as the draft is over, that the Bears are certainly no best than third in the division. And it's going to be Bears and Lions. And we'll see, historically, the Lions always figure out a way to do very little 
with a lot of talent. We'll see if that holds. If that if that stops, though, the Bears have a very real chance of finishing fourth in this division this year. As we sit here on May 2nd, you know, obviously, that can change between now and then. And we'll have all kinds of fun with it once the schedule comes out and all the other silliness of the season and injuries and all those wonderful things start happening. But as we sit here right after the draft, I certainly feel like the Bears at best are third in the division. And if the Lions can figure out how to actually maximize the talent that they have on the roster, the Bears could very easily find themselves in fourth. But if Justin Fields does, in fact, figure out a way to show that he is the guy, then it's all going to be okay. (laughs) <laughs> the Bears will have a really high pick with a lot of cap space as we head into 2023. All right, I want to finish talking about, I want to be done with the NFL. I do want to talk a little bit about the Bulls before we, we go to a quick break, and then we'll we'll close things up after a quick break. The Bulls, unfortunately, predictably, I I don't want to say... Just like I told you, because it wasn't, it's not like I had any special insight. I, I used my eyeballs and I, I saw what was in front of them, unfortunately. The Bulls were overmatched against Milwaukee. They took a game, kudos to the Bulls, going into that final game, going, going into that final game of the series, you knew that, especially when, you know, Alex Caruso was going to be questionable with a concussion. And then when it came out that Zach Levine had entered the health and safety protocols, this is done. It, it's all over. Hopefully they can at least, they can at least put on a brave face and can at least go out with their heads held high as they exit out of this lost 116 to 100. <sighs> Fell behind by nearly 30. A <sighs> lot of work to be done for the Bulls this offseason. I want to I want to do a deeper dive into what really do the Bulls need to do and need to focus on this offseason. But certainly, it's got to start with Zach Levine. Um if he's going to be playing for the Bulls next season, it seems like it better be on a max deal, a, a maximum contract deal from the Bulls because it, it, it kind of feels like he may be willing to take less to go play elsewhere if the Bulls don't give him absolutely max value. I talked about this a little bit with the guys on Fast Break. You can listen to them on Sunday nights. Um, Davidson and Dentarius do an excellent job breaking down all things hoops on Sunday nights at 8 o'clock Central Time. Talked about it with them a little bit on their program before the series ended, and it was, on the one hand, the Bulls were so riddled by injuries this season that you want to feel like, hey, they can just bring everybody back, and if they all stay healthy, this was a team that was in first place in the Eastern Conference for a long time. They should be able to do something with this, right? But on the other hand, you can't bring everybody back and expect different results. You've, you've got to do something to make changes. What do those changes have to be? That's where Kernishivitz and Eversley, the two halves of Acme Corporation, have to sit down and hammer out. They've got some hard decisions to make i don't envy them their decisions they've got some hard ones to make they've they've proven so far to be really smart really good guys overall they've earned the benefit of the doubt from me but it's going to be fascinating to see what they decide to do i do want to sit down and give it a little more than just three or four minutes here at the end of a very long show right after the nfl draft it, it deserves more weight and more attention than I'm giving it tonight, and I will give it that. I, I want to do that. But I felt it was very inappropriate to go tonight without talking about it at all. Where we sit right now, I do want Zach Levine back. He has 
he has grown so much in his time with the Bulls. He has turned into a terrific leader for them. I do. It it would be very sad to see him wearing somebody else's colors coming into United Center next season. I do want to see him back, and I think he's willing to come back. But I think he's also made it clear that he's okay walking away too if he's not given what he's looking for in a deal. So some very hard decisions coming from the Bulls out on West Madison. We will keep an eye on that. All right, we are going to take one more quick break, and then we'll have one more kind of quick segment to wrap up the show tonight. We're going to talk some baseball because the Red Line series is starting very soon. Cubs and Sox, all all kinds of fun there. And I don't normally do this, but I do it another show here on the network. My my friend Zach and I, we talk hockey on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Central, talking all things hockey. I don't normally like to play drops for other shows that I do just because it feels a little weird. I do want to play our drop from from that show because we just we had a ton of fun making it. And I kind of want to share it with you guys a little bit. So uh, indulge me for just a minute here. You will hear it. It'll be the last one I play before coming back from a break. This is Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, The SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Sports Radio. It is your direct feed for all that is sports. It is Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris every Tuesday night right here on IE Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris is the most comprehensive view on Philadelphia sports exclusively right here on IE Sports Radio. You know what it is. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Tuesday night, IE Sports Radio, Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris. Hockey fans, I'm Adam Kernick. And I'm Zach Puplis. Together, we are the newest version of Hockey Talk on IE Sports Radio, The Neutral Zone. Zone, 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 zone. We love hockey, but we also know it's not everyone's first sport. So we want to make this show as much for new fans as for the diehards. Whether you can name all the Swedes on the 08 Red Wings Stanley Cup team, or if you can't tell if Varlamov is a goalie or the latest trendy vodka, we're here to help. With facts, figures, and outrageous fans, we bring you all the hard-hitting hockey news you can handle, while still keeping it fun and on the rails. Well, mostly. 
So tune in every week as we go around the hockey world from college to Canada, the minors and the majors, and everywhere in between. So bring your sellies. And your one-timers. Your wicked ristas. And be sure to protect your five hole. Catch the Neutral Zone every week on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We promise not to pick on the Arizona Coyotes every episode. And welcome back into Chi Town Weekly here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Adam Karnick with you here. One more quick segment. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're going a little over tonight because Taryn on set point, he went earlier today talking all things volleyball. So we had a little bit of room on the back of the show tonight. Taryn will be back at his regular time next week. So next week I will be sure to keep everything tucked in nightly, nicely within the confines of an hour. Thank you, Taryn. Yeah, that, that neutral zone drop, that was a lot of fun. Zach and I had a lot of fun recording that after one of our shows a few weeks ago. And it, it was a lot of fun to edit and put together. And it was a lot of fun to do. We have a lot of fun. Uh, hockey is a sport. I've, of course, the Blackhawks and I are at a little bit of a long distance relationship right now, taking a little bit of a break from each other because of some off ice stuff. Uh, they, they have moved on from a couple of their assistant coaches. We'll see what, uh, what lies in store for them, but I still, I love the game. And so being able to, to talk about it back and forth with Zach, we have a ton of fun. So even if hockey isn't necessarily your sport, your your first love. Uh, we we keep something for everybody there. Taryn Taryn is really good about chiming into a lot of the shows. He keeps track for us of every other sport that we reference uh, to make hockey points throughout the rest of the show and and uh, and things that way. The Stanley Cup playoffs have started tonight, so I will be definitely tuning in and watching some hockey tonight, having some fun there. So thank you for indulging me a little bit there as I go a little abnormal with uh playing a drop for a show that i'm in so baseball talk to close out the show we'll make it real quick and then we will get out of here tonight the white Sox winners today beating the angels three to nothing dylan cease he had himself a day seven innings pitched 11 strikeouts no runs one hit, no walks, 93 pitches. He was dealing for the Sox today against the Angels as they closed out that game. And then also Liam Hendricks came back. A perfect one, two, three, ninth inning. Struck out all three batters he faced. Good things for the Sox on the south side from their pitching staff, allowing just two hits as a team. Got to see more offense. Got to got to avoid the injuries. That's basically been the theme for the Sox this season. The Red Line series, the Crosstown series, whatever you whatever you want to call it, North Side versus South Side. It's Cubs and Sox starting tomorrow. Just two quick games over on the North Side. White Sox and Cubs. The matchup to both teams come into it at nine and thirteen overall for the Cubs. All right, that's kind of where you thought this team would be. Seiya Suzuki has been a wonderful surprise. He was just named the National League Rookie of the Month for the month of April. Congratulations to Suzuki on that. The Cubs are basically what you thought you'd be a month into the season. The Sox are disappointing, nine and just being 9-13 and 13 at this point coming into the season. Yes, injuries have obviously played a toll on that, but as we sit here on May 2nd, the Sox are four games out in the American League Central. They're in third place. They're a game back of the Guardians, and they're four games back of the Twins for first place. And they had that miserable, miserable stretch of games all in the division where they just kept getting their bell rung day in and day out. So hopefully the month of May is significantly better on the south side for the for the White Sox we'll we'll see what happens. You can overcome a slow April, but you got to turn things around. You got to start start doing some things. For this series against the Cubs, tomorrow night it's Michael Kopech versus Drew Smiley 
advantage to me. That definitely feels advantage Kopech coming into that with a 1.42 ERA and a whip of .95. Uh, Drew Smiley, his numbers aren't bad. A uh, record of 1-2, and two, a 2.79 ERA, a whip of 1.09. Certainly good numbers. We'll we'll see what the what the Sox can do if their bats can come to life at all in that game. I I'm going to lean White Sox. I'm going to generally lean White Sox in this in this series. But then the big one Wednesday night, Lucas Giolito versus the Professor Kyle Hendricks. That should be an excellent excellent game, especially if you like pitching matchups. Hendricks, of course, he's he's either been great or he's been knocked around the yard. Giolito, a little bit more consistent overall. We'll see what uh, what happens with Giolito and Hendricks on Wednesday night. Both games, 640 starts uh, out, out at Wrigley Field. Should be, should be excellent baseball. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, my wife and I got to go to a, a Sox-Cubs game for our our first anniversary out at Wrigley, we had a lot of fun. That was quite a few years ago. Um, but we it's always fun at a baseball game. It's always fun on the north side. Not that it's not fun on the south side, but Wrigley is, is always, it's just one of those destination parks to go catch a ball game. We, of course, all know that in Chicago. So should be should be fun. Sox and Cubs, a lot of fun. We will We will break that down next week on the show. All right, that is going to do it for us here tonight lots of thank yous to get through thank you of course to the southern california warriors for sponsoring not just this show but all of the shows on the network uh congratulations again to mike pat for winning the draft challenge justin ekstrom for being our fan of the month for the month of may Huge thank you to everybody in the chat room. Taryn and Mike and Justice and Arthur and Kale was in there. Of course, Larry B stopped by for a little bit, made his presence felt. Want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anybody in there. Um, oh, yeah, and, and, and of course, my mom. Hi, mom. Thank you, everybody, for jumping in and, and hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. Oh, Andrew, thank you to Andrew for, for hanging out with us a little bit tonight in the show. Really appreciate it. I am it for the network tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we've got a whole fleet of shows. We will have uh, the Yinza Report with Ben Mattello. He kicks things off for us in the early afternoon and then we'll have Philly Sports Talk with Cash and Chris we'll have the Buffalo Huddle with Patty we will have myself and Zach doing the Neutral Zone we'll have Kale doing some City Sports talking about Vegas all kinds of fun lined up for you tomorrow so be sure to tune in tomorrow and throughout the week for tons of fun next week I plan on doing Perhaps some more bowls, definitely some more baseball. The WNBA season is right around the corner. I do want to talk about the sky. Lots to talk about next week. We won't forget about the Bears. We'll keep coming back to the Bears. As, you know, we'll, we'll keep making our way back to Bears. Until then, be good, be safe. We will see you all next week. This is Adam Karnick for IE Sports Radio. Have a good night, everybody.